Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover some very important terminologies and architecture of components in Kafka. In the previous video, we have seen the implementation of Kafka by creating a Spring Boot application with producers and consumers and started two servers, that is a Zookeeper server and Kafka server. And we were able to send the data from producer to a topic and our consumer was capable enough to fetch that data from the topic. With that implementation, we have seen a very basic demo of Kafka. Today, we will see the basic architecture of how this actually works internally. So, we have created this producer. We have created this consumer. We have started a broker, which is a Kafka server. We have started a zookeeper to handle these brokers because these brokers are stateless. Somebody has to maintain these many brokers in a particular cluster. So, the task of that was done by zookeeper. That is why we have started two servers. Now with that in place, let's quickly see how this internally works because we have seen the implementation. We should understand each and every terminology, how it internally works. So let's get started. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. Let me first give you a very high overview of it. The main components of this Kafka architecture is a producer who produces the message, a consumer who pulls the message from the topic or the broker. There's a, at, at the larger overview, there is a big cluster with multiple brokers. In the previous implementation, we have seen just one broker. We have just started one server that for, for Kafka. But in real time, for the replication purpose and for the fault tolerance, we will have multiple brokers with replica of these partitions of a topic. So there will be multiple brokers in a cluster. So cluster will comprise of broker. Broker will have topic. Topic will have partitions and partitions will have offset. So basically the architecture goes like this. There's a one, one big cluster. Cluster will have multiple brokers. Brokers will have topics. Topics will be divided into multiple partitions. Partitions will have multiple offsets and each offset will contain single event or a message. So this is one to one mapping between an offset and a message. So one, one message will reside in one offset in a part, in a particular partition. There will be multiple partitions in a topic. There will be multiple topics in a broker. There will be multiple brokers in a cluster. And there will be one cluster managing all of these things with the help of Zookeeper. And Zookeeper's task is to manage these brokers. So producer will produce the message. The message will be consumed by the consumer. The broker will be the interface between the producer and the consumer. Broker will write the data to a particular disk space named as a namespace is name as topic. Topic is divided into multiple partitions. Suppose there are three partitions, partition 0, partition 1, partition 2. Each partition is divided into offset 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And each offset will have one single message. So here you will have message 1. When it is occupied, there will be message 2, which is produced by a producer, will be consumed by a consumer. So this is a very high level overview of the architecture of Kafka. So a topic is a bucket of message or events in case of Kafka where services may place or read the message from. So basically topic is a bucket of messages. Messages are organized and stored in topics. Topic is something similar to folder. So you can consider a topic similar to this folder code decode and the messages are the files. But topics are divided into multiple subfolders or the partitions so these subfolders can be partitioned and inside these partitions you will have messages like you have files here so you can consider a topic as a folder the partitions as the subfolders and the messages as the files in those subfolders so topics are multiple producers multiple subscribers and messages can be read as many times as needed unlike the traditional messaging queues like rabbit mqs active mqs there as soon as you read the message the message is deleted this is not the case in kafka because kafka is multiple consumer so even if you read a particular consumer reads the data it should not delete it from the kafka because another consumer might want to consume it so don't delete it after you consume it so the messages are not deleted in Kafka after consumption. Instead, you can define a particular time to live for those messages in Kafka with that time to live for that particular duration message will be there in Kafka as long as that time doesn't expire. The Kafka topics are divided into partition as already told topics consider it as the folders partitions are subfolders. These partition contains the messages or the files in the subfolders. 
in a particular sequence. Each message in the partition is assigned and identify a unique offset. A topic can have multiple partitions. So here, if you can see in this, you have multiple partitions. This allows multiple consumers to read from a topic in parallel way. With this partition, a consumer 1 is reading. And with this partition, consumer 2 is reading. With, the, with this particular partition, consumer 3 is reading. So this allows multiple consumers to parallelly use a topic as they are reading from a different partitions. Remember, a particular consumer can read only from a particular partition. One partition is to be read only and only by one consumer in a consumer group. If you have multiple groups, then it can be read simultaneously. We will see that in few seconds. In Kafka, replication is implemented at partition level. Now, I'll give you an example. What if this particular broker fails? So, we have started a server in our local, right? What if that particular command prompt destroys or what if the server crashes? So what that particular broker is down? To prevent that situation, unlike what we have done to have a single broker, usually in real time, there are multiple brokers with the replication of data. So, in a particular cluster, usually there are minimum of three brokers having the replication of data. So, there will be one master or the lead broker who will read and write the data to a particular disk. Rest are the followers who will do the same which the leader is doing. So, these broker is going to have the replication of these partitions. But in case of Kafka, the replication is always on the partition level. So, always in Kafka, replication is implemented at partition level. The redundant unit of partition is called a replica. So, this, rep this partition is a replica of this partition. So, you have replicas on the partition level, not on the broker or the topic level, just on the partition level. Each partition usually has one or more replica over Kafka brokers in the cluster. These partitions will not be reside in the same broker. Otherwise, if this replica resides in the same broker, if the broker dies, then even your replica will die and there will be no fault tolerance. That is why the brokers are used to have the replicas. Multiple brokers have the replicas, not on the same broker. Every replica has one server acting as a re leader and the rest are the followers. So, I can say this is the leader and this is the follower. The replica handles the all read and write requests for a particular specific partition and the followers replicate the leader. The leader is the one who writes to the disk and the follower is going to replicate what leader is doing and will replicate the same read and write request to some another disk so that if the leader dies, the producers and consumers can at least read and write the data to the replica of those so that your you will have the fault tolerance. So, if the leader fails, one of the followers becomes the leader by default. This is the beauty of Kafka and hence the fault tolerance is very beautifully managed in Kafka. Using the leaders and followers and having the multiple brokers having just nothing but the copy of the same data in a particular cluster. When producer publishes a message to the topic, it publishes to the leader and leader appends the message to the offset. So, what happens? How does producer write to it? So, producer write the data to the broker who is having the leader and not the follower. So, producer always writes to the leader. The follower is going to replicate it. And leader appends that message to an offset. We will see how producer work internally in few minutes. Now, what is a Kafka cluster? I have already told you Kafka cluster comprises of broker, topic, partitions and offsets. So, Kafka cluster is a system that comprises of different brokers, the multiple topics and their respective partitions. Now, what a producer and how producer produces or writes the data to the topic. So, a producer sends the data to the topic within a cluster. Before producer sends any data, it has to request the cluster who is the leader. So, currently, producer is going to write the data to the particular disk to a particular topic. The cluster has multiple brokers. How will producer know where to write the data? So, it has to first ask cluster, who is your leader? Now, cluster will respond, broker 1 is the leader. This broker 1 
is the re information received by the producer. So now producer is going to write the data to this broker 1. In which particular partition, partition 0, partition 1 or partition 2 it has to write the data will be decided by the producer. Cluster is not going to re re respond it with the which particular partition it has to write. It has a task of producer to decide which partition, partition 1 or partition 2 or partition 3 or partition 4, it has to write the data to. So before a producer sends the data, it has to request cluster who is your leader. The, the metadata which is returned from the cluster contains the information which broker is the leader for which partition. And producer is always going to write to the leader partition. But now it is a task of producer to decide which partition it wants to write the data to. So there are four partitions, P1, P2, P3, P4. Which partition is going to be written by the producer is decided by a key. The producer attach a key to the message dictating which partition the message should go to. So I have decided that my message should go to partition 1. So the message, the 0th message will have a key appended which decides which partition. So it decides partition 1. So the data goes to partition 1. Now there are multiple offsets. So remember data is always written in the partition in sequential manner in offset. So until unless the 0th offset of partition 1 is not filled, the first offset of partition 1 will not be filled. So producer uses the key to know which partition to write to and by default the hash code is used of the key to calculate the partition. Now suppose my hash code becomes 1, the first partition of the topic will be used. If the hash code of the key is 3, then the third partition will be used to put my message to. And even the third partition will have the similar kind of offset implementation. A very important issue while doing such kind of hash code implementation of the key is setting the same key or the null key for all the messages. When this happens, all the keys hash code is same and they end up at the same partition in a topic. And hence, unbalanced topic. So, this topic is divided into four partitions, expecting that the producer will write to these all four partitions equally. So, that topic is not unbalanced. Currently, topic is four partitions. It is not unbalanced. If producer keep on writing all the data to the same partition, then your partition 2, 3, 4 remains unused. And hence, the topic is unbalanced with partition 1 as all the overloaded. So, remember to implement the hash of the key judicially. So that you don't overload a particular partition and not unbalance a particular topic. So this was all about producer, how producer writes it. So producer writes the data to a particular topic in a particular partition, in a particular offset, in a sequential manner. Which broker is the leader and which is the follower is, is given an information by the cluster. But which particular partition in the leader broker is to be written is decided by the producer using the hash code of a key, which is key which is appended in a particular message. With the decoding of that particular hash code, the partition is decided. Partitions are divided into multiple offsets. From that particular offset, the messages are written sequentially. How consumer consumes the data from the Kafka cluster? So consumer is the one who reads or consumes a message from the Kafka cluster. So this was our Kafka cluster, consumer is sitting here, it reads the data from a cluster, from a particular broker, from a particular topic, from a particular partition, from a particular offset. Such a complicated task, right? So the beauty of Kafka is that each consumer knows exactly from where it has to consume the data to and it is internally done by Kafka, you don't have to think about it. Now, it is a very complicated thing. I'm just going to give a very high level overview which is required for interviews. If you want to know deep about it, there's one book, a PDF I'm going to share. There you can read it or you can just let me know. I'll just compile that in a video format for you. Let me know in the comment section. For this decision, consumers within a group automatically use a group coordinator. So basically, we have started a particular Kafka server, right? This broker is a Kafka server. So that Kafka server is going to assign the offset where the consumer has to read to. So there's a group coordinator from Kafka side and there's a consumer coordinator from the consumer side. And they both interact and decide which consumer will read from which particular partition offset in the topic in broker. 
this feature is already implemented in Kafka. Therefore, we don't have to worry about it. It's very complicated how these interacts. Let me know in the comment section if you want to know a very deep insight about it. But I don't think that is required from my interview perspective. The consumer reads the data from each partition in orderly manner. That means that the consumer is not supposed to read the data from offset 1 before reading from offset 0. So similarly, what I've told you in the producer, producer will not write to the partition 3 before partition 0, 1 and 2. So it's a sequential manner in which the producer writes. Similar is with the consumer. Consumer also reads in the sequential manner from the partition. It reads from 0, 1, 2 and 3 rather than directly jumping to the fourth one. So it's a sequential manner. It is not supposed to read from the higher offset before reading the lower offset. Also, consumer can easily read data from the multiple brokers at the same time. There are type of consumers, basically two types, the low level consumers and the high level consumers. Usually what we implement in our implementation also in the previous video, we have implemented a high level consumer with the consumer groups. This is created by assigning a group ID to a consumer. Here, if you can remember, we have given a group ID code decode group. So we are saying that this particular consumer belongs to this particular group. There will be multiple consumers who can belong to same or the different group, which will be decided by this particular Kafka listeners annotations group ID attribute. If the group ID is same, those consumers belong to the same group. If they are different, they belong to different consumer groups. Giving the same group ID to another consumer means they will join the same group. Here we have already seen in the previous two previous video that consumers are smart and brokers are dumb in case of Kafka and it's opposite in case of active MQs and rabbit MQs. Why we have said that is because it's a task of consumers to pull the message from the topic. Here if you can say brokers are dumb, they just sit idle and will say okay, just come to me when you need the data, I'll give it to you. It's a task of consumer to pull the data from the broker from the topic. So these are smart consumers and dumb brokers. They are lazy. They just sit idle. The task of consumer is to pull the data from the topic. So consumers pull the top messages from the topic partition. Messages are never pushed to consumers like as we used to do in the active MQs, rapid MQs. Consumers will ask for the message when consumer is ready to handle the message. The consumer will never overload themselves with lots of data and does not lose data since all messages are being queued up in the Kafka. If consumer is behind during the message processing, so suppose there is some issue with the consumer and it is behind processing, what it will do is it will it can reset its offset value and reread from the previous offset. So it has an offset to reset the offset value while reading from and read again from the previous offset. So that is why it says consumers are smart consumers. We have seen producers, we have seen consumers. It's time for the brokers and partitions. The broker, a Kafka server, broker, a Kafka node all refers to the same concept. In our case, we have downloaded a Kafka and we have run a particular command that is Kafka server start.sh script. With this particular script, we have started our node, broker or server. So I can say that only one broker is what we have started initially. A broker is a bridge between producer and a consumer. If producer wishes to write data to the cluster, it sends it to the Kafka server. So the task of server is to get the data and write it to a particular disk space. A Kafka broker allows consumer to fetch the message from the topic partition and offset. So the task of broker is to get the data from the server and write it to the disk space and allow the consumers to fetch it from the disk space. All of these brokers, these brokers lie in the cluster. To maintain the load balance, cluster typically consists of multiple brokers. To not only just the load balance, but also to prevent the failures, we have multiple brokers in our clusters. You can start a single broker using the script that we have shown in the previous video. But running a single script is possible, but it does not give all the benefits that Kafka give in a cluster. For example, of data replication and failure tolerance. So if you have the single broker, there is no other broker to replicate your partition and hence in case this particular broker dies nobody is going to take over this particular broker and your whole system will trash so that is why it's always said that you should have a cluster having multiple brokers having the replication of partitions so that if the leader dies followers can become a leader that was all about brokers now partition we have seen this is a partition this partition, there is one partition which is the leader partition. There is all the others in the other brokers are the follower partitions. And pa always replication is done in the partition level. Partitions are divided into offsets. Always is written and read in the sequential manner. Let's go ahead with the zookeeper. 
Now, in the previous video, we have not just started a Kafka server. We've also started a Zookeeper server. And why did we do that? The reason why we also implemented and started the Zookeeper is for the managing and coordinating between multiple Kafka brokers. So, if you can see, we have a cluster. We have multiple brokers. Brokers will have the replication of data so that to load balance, I have the fault tolerance. Now, we, these brokers are stateless. So, to maintain the state and coordinate between multiple brokers, if the broker dies, make the follower the leader, all these tasks will be done by somebody who somebody has to do that. They're, that's not a task of producer and consumer. Producer is just to produce, consumer is just to consume. Who will manage these brokers when one dies, another has to become the leader. That will be done by Zookeeper. So, the purpose of managing and coordinating the Kafka brokers, we have used Zookeeper. So, Zookeeper stores the information about the cluster. Basically, cluster contains the brokers and hence, the Zookeeper manages the information about brokers. It manages broker by maintaining the list of them. Management of broker is performed by Zookeeper. There will be multiple Zookeepers in the cluster. Now, we know that brokers are stateless and hence to maintain the cluster state, we use Zookeeper. Zookeeper is also responsible for choosing the leader for the partition. Now, in the previous slide, we have seen that there is a leader and the rest of them are the followers. Who will be the leader will be decided by the Zookeeper. And that knowledge about who will be the leader is given to the producer by the cluster. And who decides the leader? That is the zookeeper. Also, it used to notify the producer and consumer about the presence of any new broker or if this particular broker fails, to whom the producer can write to the new broker and whom the new broker, the consumer can consume from will be decided by the zookeeper only. So, if the leader dies, if there are multiple followers, which of those followers will become a leader and will who will tell the producer Sorry, your old leader dies. Now you write to the new follower and which is the new leader is decided by the zookeeper. As soon as zookeeper sends the notification regarding the failure of a broker, then the producer and consumer take the decision. Okay, stop sending the data to the broken broker and start sending the data to the new leader decided by the zookeeper. It also notifies consumer the offset value. So we have seen this is a very... A hectic task, how consumer reads it, but who decides from where it has to read the data again in the consumer is decided by the zookeeper. Now, zookeeper is designed to operate with the odd number of Kafka, so that, that is why it's always said at least have three brokers when you design a particular cluster in Kafka. The zookeeper has a leader server that handles all writes and there is a follower who handles all reads. However, we do not indirectly interact with zookeeper, but we interact with the zookeeper via brokers. No Kafka server can run without Zookeeper. So, in the previous video also, before starting the Kafka, we have started Zookeeper. So, it's mandatory to run Zookeeper before Kafka server. If you do in the opposite direction, you will not be able to implement it properly. That was all about Kafka. Now, we have Kafka streams. If you want to know about Kafka streams, let me know in the comment section. I'll create another video. Also, I can create one separate video for you which is only from the interview perspective these three videos were the tutorial ones if you want to know just about the interview questions let me know in the comment section i'll create a separate video covering only and only the interviewed questions thank you